generations, all generations. Father, we honor you, and it's a privilege to come before your presence with singing, with hearts of joy, thanking you, God, that you've given us an opportunity to be able to praise your holy name. So now we come to the time that changes us. That's your word. You said that we cannot live by bread alone, but we live by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of the Father. So as I preach your words, God, I pray that life comes. God, you're so amazing. You can make one word touch men, women, teens, boys, girls, single, married, divorced, widow, winning, on the way to winning, in the struggle, on the top of the mountain, in the valley. I, I don't know how you do it, but I thank you, Father, that this one word touches every single person where we are and causes us to move forward. We thank you, Father, that there's a harvest of people that will be here today that most importantly give their life to you. Uh, they renew a relationship with you. And we thank you, Father, that there's a group of people that have been circled circling Atlanta looking for a life-giving church whether they were invited by a friend or uh, looking on the internet or just driving by or however they find out about the faith center today God they need to search no more this will be their home today they'll choose this place to say this is where I want to plant and this is where I want to grow but most importantly God we thank you that you give us the victory we thank you that Satan you are absolutely defeated in every area of our lives we win in our families we win in our finances we win in our faith you cannot have our children and you cannot operate in this church as a matter of fact we evict you from this community we take this community for the kingdom of God in Jesus name we give you the praise we give you the glory we say amen Hey, before you take your seats, don't y'all feel God is just up to something? And aren't you glad that he's including you in what he's up to? <laughs> Let's make our faith confession for the word of God. Let's do it, Faith Center. The applied word of God will change my life instantly. I'm both a hearer and a doer of the word. I live to please God. And not by sight. I will possess my promises I will pursue with passion. I will prosper as my soul prospers. To, is my evidence in Jesus' name. Will you say amen? You may be seated. You may be seated. Um, I'm starting a new series today called She Rows. Do we have any She Rows in the house? Hey, AV team, y'all can take 10 off of that. I'm going to try to make it happen. Say She Rows. We're going to be celebrating women in the Bible, celebrating women in the Bible, but I don't want you to tune out just because we're celebrating women in the Bible. There's something that all of us will be able to gravitate to today when we talk about she -rolls. One of my favorite artists, one of my favorite artists, you can go ahead and turn to Judges, Judges, you can turn to Judges 4. Uh, at Judges 4, we're going to read a few verses in there. But one of my favorite artists, one of my favorite artists, um, the, the greatest showman. He's one of the greatest, if not the greatest, one of the greatest showmen ever. The Godfather of soul. Y'all know who James Brown is? If you do not, get at your stuff and get out. Uh, James Brown, in 1966, he made this song says, This is a man's... Come on, come on, church. y'all. This is a man. But it wouldn't be nothing without a woman or a girl, without a woman or a girl. He says it's a man's world, but there's something that women add to this world that makes it have its flavor, that makes it has its touch, that makes it has its caress, that makes it has something that a man cannot uh, give. When I'm talking about the attributes of a shero, number one, I need you to get these down, attributes of a shero, number one, uh, she's serious about her relationship with God. She, she, she's serious. Say serious. Um, with, with this seriousness, that means she's vocal about her relationship with God. She's visible with her relationship with God. She doesn't hide it. She's ser when you're serious about it, you put it out there. She's not only vocal, she's visible, she she's vigilant. She's vigilant, meaning she's keenly watchful to detect danger. 
No, you're a shero, you're a woman hero that does, that does heroic things. Here's the thing I love about being a shero. Check this out. You can be as normal as you want to be. You don't have to be this extraordinary person. It's when you yield your life to God that God allows you to do what we call heroic things. So she's serious, say serious, about her relationship with God. So within that seriousness, she's vocal, she's visible, she's vigilant. And then check this out. Sometimes sheroes are violent. There's a killer instinct to defend and fight for her relationship with God. There's a killer instinct, though, that I, I will stand for my God. I will fight for my God. I'm serious about my relationship with God. Number two, number two, a shero is she has a heart for God and people. She has a heart for God and people. Number three, number three, these are just some attributes. There are five of them. She has ears to hear him speak. She has ears to hear him speak. She understands that I cannot do it by myself. I need to be able to hear God speak to me and give me direction. I like this one, number four. She's a risk taker. She's a risk taker. That means, that means if you're going to take risk, you have to be a person of faith. Because faith makes you step out beyond your comfort zone. And you have to calculate the risk and trust God along the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then number five, say, uh-oh. She's obedient to God and overcomes adversity. Even when I marry people, they'd be like, can we take out that love and obey? That's so old school. Can't you just say, like, love and work together? Because <laughs> obey is really just a seasoning anyway. It's, it's Obedient to God. Can I mess with my sheroes? You'll never obey a man if you don't obey God. Well, I ain't finna be obeying nobody, no way. My, my daddy dead and ain't no, well, I'm talking to sheroes. Because if you really study the thing out, the men are subject and obedient as well. But when you have this thing, ain't nobody telling me, around, around, I don't pay, ain't no child around here. I got degree, I make money too. She knows how to overcome adversity. Say adversity. Versus, versus, oh, I got to move. Versus, life revolves around relationship status. No, because number one was she's serious about her relationship with God versus her life revolves around a relationship status. You cannot be a shero and the determining factor of how happy you are is dependent on the status that you put booed up, single, in between. No, the, your, your relationship status does not determine your value. Y'all ain't got to say nothing. I got, I'm going to work anyway. Number two, she's led by her mind only and not her heart core. And she, she, just, she just does this out of her mind. When number two, you're supposed to, as, as I'm doing these, go back to number two. I'm doing the contradiction, so put number two back up there. Number two is she has a heart for God and people. This other one that's not a shero, she's led by her mind only, and she does not have a heart or core for people. She, she, she's not led by her mind only. Number three, check this out. She wants to be heard but doesn't listen. But you're supposed to have ears to hear God speak. Number four, number four, she's a risk taker. But this one, she lazy. Man wants to help me. Help me meet. Y'all, see, man, I 
be preaching, and y'all be like, I don't like that. No, think about it. You standing up and you done study and you got the whole half the church like. Get to the good part, reverend. <laughs> Even if you don't desire to be married, you can't be lazy and do anything heroic. I've never wonder woman. Never heard a sleepy woman. I'm going to get the men at Father's Day. Y'all just hang on. <laughs> number five, number seven, subject to no authority. Subject to no authority. Subject to no authority. Uh, she's serious about him. We're talking about Deborah today. Deborah, Deborah, she's a great woman in the Bible. She's a judge. She, she's a prophetess. She's a woman of strong faith. Uh, she's a brave activist. She's the first female warrior in the Bible, and she's also a wife. The thing I like about her, she's very courageous. She's courageous with her life. She, she's wise. She's powerful. Um, she's prophetic, and she's strong. The thing that I like uh, that I'm going to pull out of this story is that she was so in love with her people that she was willing to put her life on the line for them. What I'm saying is a Shiro understands that my value and worth should be given to something that's greater than me at some point in my life. It can't just be about me. I have to serve a purpose that's greater than myself. Now, whether you're a shero or a hero, you got to understand, God gifted you with certain abilities that's just not for you and your household. You should be using some type of intellectual property. You should be using some type of gift of gab, a street hustle, or something that God has given you, some brawn, something to make life better for somebody else. Well, see, um, I'll segue into this. In, in the beginning of July, Lady C and I are going to Haiti to establish a relationship that I believe is going to be a part of our global missions because we've been working on this for some time. We have to use what God has given us to make life better, come on y'all, for somebody else. I know we do some things locally, but the people that we're helping locally are very rich compared to the people that we need to help abroad. We have to be able to use our power, our ability, our resources, and our connections to make life better for somebody else. So now, let's go to Judges. I'm going to read the NIV version. If you don't have that, you can just check out the screen. I'm going to start at verse number four. It says, now Deborah, a prophet, there's some tough words in here. So if you can pronounce them all, then you do it. But if not, don't laugh at me. Say, don't laugh at Pastor. <laughs> now Deborah, the prophet of uh, the wife of that guy right there, was leading at Israel at that time. She held court under the palm of De Deborah between Ramah and Bethel in the hill country of Ephraim. And the Israelites went up to her. Uh, uh, Kadesh in that right there and said to him the Lord the God of Israel commands you watch this go take with you 10,000 men of Nephetel and Zebulun and lead them up to Mount Tabor I will lead Sesera the commander of Jabin's army with his chariots and his troops to Kashan River and give him into your hands. Let me put it together. Look at me. Deborah, the word of the Lord comes to her. She goes to the local general. We'll find out in a moment. His name is Barack. Not Obama. His name is Barack. And she's giving wisdom to the local general. This is what the Lord is saying. You need to take 10,000 men and you're going to go over here and fight this battle. But he's saying, what about the enemy? Don't worry about the enemy. I'm going to make sure he gets exactly where he needs to be to deliver him into your hands to fulfill the plan that God has for you to win the battle. Everybody good? Okay. Okay. So then let's look at verse number nine, eight, eight, verse number eight, verse number eight. Barak said to her, if you go with me, I will go. But if you don't go with me, I won't go. Verse number nine, Deborah says, certainly, I'll go with you, said Deborah, but, but, but because of, of the course you're taking, the honor will not be yours, for the Lord will deliver them into your hands of a woman. 
So Deborah went with Barak to Kadesh. There Barak summoned Zebulun and Ephetel, and 10,000 men went to up under his command. Deborah also went with him. Look at verse number 15. Drop down to verse number 15. At Barak's advance, the Lord routed them. The Lord routed them. So let's look at three simple things that we need to see. One of the things that, 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 that challenges me is women have great strength, great wisdom, great intellect. And after all the strides that we've made in society and all of the evidence that the Bible has of strong women leading movements, helping establish things, helping accomplish things, we still have a society that won't trust women. We still have a society that, that, that tries to keep women in, 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 in certain pockets and certain places. But the Bible tells me, and this is just not marriage, but from a marriage standpoint, that my favor is tied up in a woman. So if God says, for the married guy, this is your favor, I believe there's something pretty awesome on the inside of her. I'm going to make a statement and I'm going to get put my head down and preach. I believe this. This is Campbellology. I believe this. More of our marriages would be better if we would listen to our wives. This is what I'll say. If you have better results, I listen to you. See, this is the thing with us. We want to argue for what's not working. No, God, God put them in our lives. Uh, we're, we're shaped, think about it, we're shaped by big mama. We're shaped by grandmama and, and nana. We're shaped by auntie. And, and, and we get to a place to where now you can't help me, you can't tell me. That how, how is that? How is that? But then we have to look at some things that Deborah did now. Say no takeover spirit. I'm not preaching this next week. I don't know what I need to do. I, I need, you think I need to do this next week? We doing good. This side over here, they want to hear something else. <laughs> Three simple things to see. Three simple things to see. Three simple things to see. Out of the text that we just read, number one, Deborah was prophetic. Deborah was prophetic. She told him a pending victory that had not happened yet. Number two, number two, she helped the local general with godly instructions. Godly instructions. This is why you have to have ears to hear from God so you can give godly instructions so everything won't be out of your emotions. Number three, number three, number three, number three. She was willing to fight for what she loved. Here's three simple things that we need to do based on what Deborah did. Number one, listen to the Lord in the midst of your battle. Okay, here's a battle that's pending, but Deborah had the time to listen to the Lord. If you look at me, men and women all across this auditorium, and those of you that are streaming, when you're in your battle, you need to be more sensitive to the voice of the Lord and not so sensitive to the fear that's talking to you. When it comes time for the battle, you cannot cower down to feelings and data and facts and information. No, I need to be sensitive to the Spirit of God. That's why when you're going through, that's why you need to come to church when you're going through. You ever seen somebody ask them, girl, where you been? I just been going through at home. Yeah, just been at home going through. No, you need to come to the sanctuary and lift your hands. And cry out to God and pray and serve. Get in an environment where God speaks so God will give you the instructions for your battle. Number two, number two, don't be afraid to help this time. <laughs> okay. I'm saying lady. I'm saying lady. Just to my 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 lady. See, Deborah, Deborah was not afraid to help Barack this time. Past experiences 
will cause you to be fearful to help somebody right now. I'm going to move, I'm going to move, I'm going to move. Number three, number three, number three, number three, number three. Say show up. Okay, this is simple. I love that. I'm going to try not to preach this one, but say show up. Here's the challenge. There is no victory without an opponent and a fight. Most of us want the victory, but we don't want the fight. Deborah is able to be a shero because she understood the victory is ours, but we got to go fight for what belongs to us. What do you mean fight? Does it mean physical fight? No, 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 no. The woman with the issue of blood, she had to fight through the crowd. Mary had to fight through embarrassment, ridicule, and all the things that people would say just to bring forth the Savior of the world. You have to understand, when God, we're saying it's our winning season, well, you don't win if you don't play the game. You don't win if you don't show up. You don't win if you don't look at the opponent and say, I know you might be all that, but God is with me, and I'm showing up. I might not have to do it all, but God's got my back. Somebody say, show up. No, you have to have an opponent to have a victory. This is like somebody coming to you and say they got a a ring. That's a championship ring. Yeah, we won, man. We we won 27 to nothing. Who did you play? Nobody. You played no one and you have a championship ring? Yeah, look at it. What day did y'all play? We didn't. What stadium did y'all play in? Nah, we didn't. Well, how did you win? I got a ring. That's how we approach life. No, you got to show up to the model home to actually get the home. You got to show up on the internet and fill out the resume to actually get the job. You have to show up at the gym. Come on, girl. You got to show up at the gym. I just, God, I want this weight to go away. God, I want this weight to... Still there. God, I want, no, no. Somebody say show up. If you want the victory, you have to show up. But when you show up, you got to stand there and watch God show out. Somebody say boldness. See, this is why I love when there's no victory. Because you have to understand, victory is yours already. Okay, I got to say that again. Victory is yours already. Okay, I got to say that one more time. Victory is yours already. You need to tell that to yourself. Victory is mine already. No, you got to say that one more time. Because if you understand, it's our winning season, and we're saying hi to winners, that means you already have the victory. Okay, some of y'all to get this way. Grandmama used to say, victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. Satan been messing with me. Satan been talking to me. Satan been in front of me. But I told Satan, get your, get thee behind. But why? Victory today is mine. But pastor, nothing happened on Monday. Well, wake up on Tuesday and declare, victory is mine. Victory is mine is my victory today is my what you gonna do i told satan get thee behind victory today is mine here's what i understand about victory if you're willing to show up every day for it there's gonna be a day that it actually shows up for you some of us quit showing up i tried two times it might take 10 times but the next day you wake up Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. This for the women. I told Satan, get thee behind. Victory today is mine. And you walk around like you got the victory. You put on perfume, you smell like victory. You sit at your desk and you act like victory. You walk around, I got the victory.
no way in the world you gonna be down when you got the victory. There's no way in the world you gonna back down when you got the victory. God has given you the victory. Tell somebody beside you, hey winner, hey, hey. This is what I love about Deborah. She was bold enough not to just say we're going to fight, but she was bold enough to say, sure, I'll come fight because I already know we got the victory. Woo! She was bold enough to say, sure, I'll come fight because I know we have the victory. What are you willing to fight for this week that you know God has already given you the victory? Do you know that you have the victory in your marriage? Do you know that you have the victory in your relationship? Do you know that you have the victory in your body? Do you know that you have the victory on your job? Fight for it. If I do nothing else today, I want to wake up the fighter in you. Wake up that fight in you. You know what? I'm going to fight for this company. I'm going to fight for my dreams. I'm, 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 I'm going to fight for what I believe in. There is no victory without the fight. Somebody say be bold. Be bold. And my pastor's points as we finish out this sermon. Y'all get anything out of today? Here's my pastor's point. Number one, a shero, a woman of faith, can lead people to victory. She can lead people to victory and whole life health. That's the point. And whole life health. This month is, is mental health awareness. And it's interesting that we, we're just hearing a lot about it, but it's been going on for many, many years. This has been a, a month for many, many years. I believe that there are people in life that can help people move to mental health awareness. Now, I know Deborah didn't do that, but what I'm talking about is this current age. The, the old hymn says, a charge to keep I have, a God to glorify. Watch this, to serve this present age, my calling to fulfill. I think some of us got stuck with the song and we're doing it the old way and we're not serving this present age. This present age is suffering with mental illness. This present age, our families are being plagued with people that, that have chemical imbalances and different things that are going on that they really need somebody to help them and talk with them and process through some things. And we've been victims of all type of things, abuse and abandonment and destruction because people are mentally ill and they need that help. But we need to have people. See, this one I'm talking about serving something that's greater than yourself. I'm grateful that God has put people in our congregation like Latasha and Portia and others that understand that and, and that appreciate that a pastor would take the time to talk about the things that plague our children. And Selena is a counselor and she sees the mental health issues that are even in our children. And look at me, look at me, look at me, look at me. You don't have to raise your hand. You don't have to stand up if that's you. Nothing is wrong with you. Okay, okay, okay. But wait a minute. You said they mentally. No, no. What I'm talking about, don't be embarrassed to go talk with someone. Don't be embarrassed to say, I need help. Don't be embarrassed that somebody in the church is going to make fun of you because your struggle might not be their struggle. But trust me, they have a struggle. But we put this thing in church where if you go talk to somebody, you crazy. No, you ain't crazy. It's just something you need help with. Can we just celebrate that right there? <laughs> number two, number two, when you win the battle, give God the glory. When you win the battle, give God the glory. De De Deborah gave God the glory. You're going to win. But this is what we have to do to make sure, Lowe and Dex, that as we are winners, we cannot get above ourselves. We have to give God the glory. Say, give God the glory. Here's number three as I finish for my sheroes. 
Sometimes leadership means leading from the front lines. Sometimes it means listening. Sometimes it means listening. One of the greatest things that I've had to learn to do as a leader is not give advice. Because sometimes, I, I'm, I'm helping someone here. Advice is not the healer. A listening ear is. Sometimes when people come to you, they don't want to hear what you know. They want to hear that you care. You need to do this and you need to do that and you need to do this. No, 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 no. I'm so sorry you feel the way that you feel. So tell me, how does that make you feel? Tell me then, what does that make you do? Oh, so this is why you do that, because of this, 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 this. Sometimes we just need to be a person that will listen. This is what I want to charge you to do. This week, everyone, slow life down enough that when the Lord sends someone to you that you need to listen to, listen. Inconvenience yourself to be a hero to them. No, no, well, I got to get here by 3 o'clock and I got to do this. Hey, it might be worth being late to get there at 3 o'clock so they can get to their destiny. Let's pray. Father, we honor you and we thank you. We give you praise. We give you glory. We magnify you and we, we lift you. Will you all just stand where you are? Will you all just stand where you are? Where are you standing? Just keep your eyes closed and your heads bowed. Here's why we showed up today. Here's why we showed up today. So you could give yourself to something greater than yourself. If you're in this place today and you're not living an authentic relationship with Jesus Christ, I want to include you in my prayer. If you're in this place today and you say, Pastor Campbell, I'm not saved, but I want to be, I want to include you in my prayer. If you're in this place today and you say, Pastor Campbell, I was living for Jesus, but for some reason I walked away. I, I, I want to include you in my prayer. There is no winning. There is no heroism without him. I promise you I will not embarrass you. I just want to pray for you where you are and give you some free information to explain the decision that you just made. So if you're in this place and you say, Pastor Campbell, I'm not saved, but I want to be. Here's my question to you. If you die today, where do you spend eternity? If you cannot say I'm positively, I know I'm going to heaven with Jesus, then you need to be in this prayer. So on the count of three, if I want to give my life to Jesus or I want to rededicate my life to Jesus, if that's you, I, I want to include you in my prayer. So what you're going to do when I say three, just want you to boldly slip your hand in the air. So I'll know who I'm praying for, but more importantly, God knows who's choosing him today. So all across this auditorium, one, two, three, slip that hand in the air. If you say, Pastor Campbell, please include me in your prayer. I see you back over there. Anybody else say, Pastor Campbell, I, I see you right there. 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 I see you right here. I see you right there. Yeah. 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 This is the most heroic thing you will ever do. To be weak enough, to be strong enough to say, I need Jesus. So those of you that raised your hand, the usher should have given you some information by now. Church family and those of you that lifted your hands, will you repeat after me? Let's support them. Say, Lord Jesus. Thank you so much for your love and your goodness. Come into my heart. Be my Lord and my Savior. I believe, Jesus, you are the Son of God, raised from the dead for me. Teach me how to live this overcoming life for you. I am changed. I am forgiven. I am saved. I am free. I am new. In Jesus' name, will you shout amen? Come on, clap your hands for Jesus. For the next 30 seconds, can we just lift this up right here?